Recently, Michael Knowles of The Daily Wire gave a talk at the University of Cincinnati where he launched a devastating critique on climate change. Or did he? Well, let's have a closer look. My name's Malin Baker. This is the Malin Baker Show for Changemakers. So I've done a video recently about Michael Knowles' boss and colleague, Ben Shapiro, on climate change. But Ben says relatively little on the subject and Michael's gone into rather more detail. Why should we care? Because he and Ben and the Daily Wire crew generally are rising voices of reason for the centre right of US politics. And because the issue of climate change is important, and it would be way better if the influential voices of the centre right would sort their thinking out in this area. I'm particularly focused on this because I think if we can get the political right refocused on the issue in the way that they once were, they might just come up with better proposals than the left. So Michael, if you're watching this, please take this as a friendly but pointed critique. This talk was supposed to happen 12 years from now. I was working with you and I, I told them that's not going to work because 12 years from now, we're all going to be dead from global warming. <laughs> Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez told me that, and I don't want to take the chance. There are definitely some stupid things that political figures have said on the subject, and this is one of them. Now, arguably, AOC wasn't being literal when she used those words, but to be honest, I don't care whether she was or she wasn't. If people say dumb things, then be my guest. I'm actually, in this video, more interested in what the science really says. Nowhere, however, is this truer than on the issue of climate change, or global warming, or whatever other euphemism you want to use this week. I don't know what it will be next week. Now this is a trope to imply that all of those wacky climate alarmists keep changing their terms because, well, one minute they called it global warming, but then, hey, we had some cold weather, so we better change the name. Now, to be fair, this isn't just you, Michael. Your boss, Ben Shapiro, has done the same. That's why they call it climate change now and not global warming, because the, the Earth basically has not been warming for the last 15 years or so. Inconveniently, that's not how it happened. Having first been identified as long ago as 1896, it was officially labelled in 1955 as the carbon dioxide theory of climatic change, climate change for short. The IPCC was formed in the 1980s. That's the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the clues in the name. Global warming is the process that creates climate change. They're related, but they're not the same scientific concept. So nothing changed, at least not in the scientific community. Just consider the term climate denier. Why do they use the term climate denier? They use it to compare global warming skeptics to Holocaust deniers. And why do they compare it to the Holocaust? Because they are comparing the threat posed by global warming to the threat posed by Adolf Hitler and Nazi Germany. Now, Michael, I'm going to give you that one. I'm not a huge fan either of the climate denier label. I don't personally think that it came about because people were making moral equivalency between the Holocaust and climate change. I think it came about because people wanted to draw equivalency between very well-known levels of delusion but to be honest, I don't care enough to check. It's a polemical device. I'm focusing here on the science. I don't like it because it's used as a label in order to shut down conversation in the same way that most of today's political name calling is used. We can do better. In the 1970s, leftist political activists and their friends in the scientific community told us that climate change meant the dawn of a new ice age. What was then called global cooling. On January 11th, 1970, the Washington Post, you know, our favorite newspaper, the Washington Post reported, quote, scientists see ice age in the future. Then a couple of decades later, they came to the exact opposite consensus. It was again a consensus. It was again by all of these scientists. Ooh, the leftist political activists and their friends in the scientific community. I like the way that implies some sort of conspiracy. Who'd have thought that the scientific community were all just friends of leftists and that 1970s leftists had some opinion about what the climate should be doing in the first place? Because even then, they had a vision that they could use this to take over the world for their nefarious ends. Well, of course they didn't. The left wasn't much interested in the environment in those days. It was a right-wing political leader a decade later, Margaret Thatcher, who was also trained as a scientist, by the way, who first grasped the issue. 
But what about this argument about the broad scientific consensus in the 70s about a new ice age? Well, in fact, it was nothing of a sort. A review of peer-reviewed scientific papers through 65 to 79 showed not only no consensus, but nowhere near any kind of majority for the view there was global cooling. Of those papers that touched on the issue, seven described cooling, 44 indicated warming. Now, of course, there were certain popular media articles that jumped onto isolated presentations and blew them into a big thing. That's not the same as a scientific consensus. The current climate change theory is that the world is heating up. It's heating up very fast. It is heating up because of human activity, and it is going to kill us all very, very soon. Well, no, none of the current science says that it's going to kill us all very soon. It does say that there are going to be serious repercussions, and long-term impacts will get increasingly serious. Now, of course, what you probably meant is that the imminent doom is the political rhetoric of some of your opponents. Don't get that conflated with scientific theory. We have the scientific consensus. We at 97% of climate scientists, don't you know, believe in catastrophic man-made global warming. So we need to do something ASAP, right? Wrong. Not true at all. A political activist arrived at that number by looking at a random sampling of scientific papers on the climate. Now, the vast majority of those papers had no opinion on man-made global warming whatsoever, 66%. Of the remaining 34% that took a side, 33% said that there was at least some weak connection between human activity and global warming. When you divide 33 by 34, what do you get? 97%. When you divide 33 by 100, what do you get? Not 97%. You get 33%, very far from consensus. And this, Michael, is where you cross the line from attacking your political opponent to rubbishing the science. So this is where we have an issue. And it's really rather disingenuous trying to make it sound as though only 33% of scientists really support the consensus, the rest choosing to stay silent. That's not the process at all. If you review a cross-section of all of the published peer-reviewed papers in a particular field, you have to narrow it down to those that actually deal with the subject you're looking at. Those that express an opinion then becomes your pool. The 66% of papers that were discarded were done so because they didn't deal with the question at hand. They were focused on something else, something specific within the broader topic of climate, like talking about methods of paleoclimatic analysis, for instance. But if you're still not convinced, there have been subsequent studies. 2,000 authors of peer-reviewed scientific studies were emailed and asked to rate their own papers, and 97% of them confirmed their belief that human activities are causing climate change. In 2004, a survey of all peer-reviewed studies on the subject of global climate change between 93 and 2003 was carried out. It found not a single paper rejected the consensus, with 75% confirming it, 25% not dealing with it. Separately, in 2009, a survey of 3,149 Earth scientists was polled about whether they believed in the consensus. 82% said yes. However, more interesting is when you compare the responses to the level of expertise the individuals had in climate science, the correlation was higher. Scientists who were not climatologists and didn't publish research, 77% of them said yes. However, those who were climatologists who actively published research on climate change, the figure was, wait for it, 97.5%. Furthermore, the American Meteorological Society surveyed its 7,000 members in 2012. It received a little over 1,800 responses. Of those responses, only 52%, a bare majority, said that they think humans have caused any warming at all, ever. Now, Michael, you need to spend more time on your research. The authors of that 2012 study said that the political manipulation of their results had been horrifying, completely misrepresented their findings. To be sure, the American Meteorological Society carried out a subsequent study in 2016 with questions framed for the minimum scope for ambiguity. Out of the 4,000 they polled, 96% agreed that climate change is happening. 1% disagreed to say they believed it was actually not happening. Al Gore does not have a lot of scientific achievements to his name other than inventing the internet. That was a, that was a good one. But other than that, uh, he didn't really do that either. 
He hasn't accomplished anything in science. Leftist politicians may be convinced of man-made catastrophic global warming, but many scientists are not. Among them are Dr. Richard Lindzen or Dr. Freeman Dyson, physicist from Princeton, and Bjorn Lomberg, environmental economist and former director of the Danish Environmental Assessment Institute. Dr. Kiminori Ito is also a skeptical scientist, and he was actually an expert reviewer for the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Will Happer, physicist also from Princeton, and Ian Plymer, the Australian geologist, the co-editor of the Encyclopedia of Geology, also not losing any sleep over global warming. Alan Carlin, who's an economist for the EPA, Ivar Jever, a Nobel Prize winning physicist, describes global warming as pseudoscience. Nobel Prize winning physicist, more impressive than Al Gore. As you correctly state, Al Gore is not a climate scientist. Politicians on both sides, sadly, are prone to interpreting the science in ways that suits their agenda. Al Gore has made several inaccurate claims in his work on his area. You can criticise him all you like for those mistakes, as far as I'm concerned. But don't imagine that such mistakes includes the assessment of the seriousness of a problem that we face. If only that were the case. But then what about these esteemed individuals you've named? Well, there are, of course, some climate scientists who do stand against the consensus, about 3% of them, as we've established. But, Michael, most of your names don't actually count amongst them. I mean, you do know how science works, don't you? People take on specialisms, become very knowledgeable in their specialism, but no more knowledgeable about anyone else's. When you need new glasses, Michael, you won't go to a geologist, I assume, you'll go to an ophthalmologist. Because a geologist, smart though they may be, knows nothing about how your eyes work. In the same way, Ian Plimmer may be an excellent scientist, but he's a mining geologist, not a climatologist. Bjorn Lomborg has some interesting and valid arguments, he's a great contrarian, but he's not a climate scientist and he doesn't publish peer-reviewed papers. And Alan Carlin is an economist. I mean, economists can't even agree amongst themselves about the economy. So what on earth he's doing on your list, I can't imagine. Richard Lindzen is indeed a professor of atmospheric physics. You might have added a few other names that you didn't, such as John Christie. Those are names that belong to the very small pool of sceptics amongst the climate science community. But if you're going to put all of them on one side and then Al Gore on the other, you're ignoring the 97% of expert scientists who publish proper scientific research and agree that we have a big problem. But what evidence do we have to be sceptical other than their opinion? Well, for one, the alarmists' predictions keep not happening. <laughs> Around the time of the first Earth Day, in 1970, the Harvard biologist George Wald predicted that, quote, civilization will end within 15 or 30 years unless immediate action is taken against problems facing mankind. Washington University biologist Barry Commoner wrote in the scholarly journal Environment, quote, we are in an environmental crisis which threatens the survival of this nation and of the world as a suitable place of human habitation. And then there is the biologist, Paul Ehrlich. He's my favorite. He predicted, quote, population will inevitably and completely outstrip whatever small increases in food supplies we make. The death rate will increase until at least 100 to 200 million people per year will be starving to death during the next 10 years. Now, this one is just ridiculous. Some individuals have been wrong in the past. Here's a huge consensus of scientists. Therefore, they must be wrong like those that have been in the past. Seriously? I mean, calling them all alarmists might make them sound as though they're all part of some self-identified homogenous group. But saying that someone's wrong because some other unrelated person was wrong in the past is just the most ridiculous logic. Whatever would Ben say? Since the execrable Michael Moles, execrable, execrable, execrable Michael Moles. In the interest of charity, let's imagine for a moment that all of the catastrophic predictions were true. Let's analyze the left's favorite solution, the Green New Deal. Now, when you get on to criticizing the Green New Deal, I have nothing to add. Be my guest. Arguably, it's a cack-handed piece of political posturing. You should have plenty to keep you busy in pulling it apart. But Michael, this is my point. You don't need to oppose the settled climate science to oppose what the left is doing with that information. In fact, it's irresponsibly lazy to do it, because in the meantime, we do have a real problem that needs solving. 
The political right is the natural place where we should generate solutions to those real problems, but nevertheless aims to protect the economic gains we've made over recent decades and people's freedoms. Yes, the Green New Deal is trash. We need an alternative that deals with the science properly. Facts don't care about your feelings, but then the environment doesn't give a damn about your ideology. Seriously, you're becoming an influential voice of a political centre-right along with your Daily Wire colleagues. You have an opportunity to do better than to obscure something that threatens American communities in the short to medium term purely in order to gain political scoring points, especially since the activities of your opponents mean those points can easily be scored without obscuring the reality of the crisis they pretend to address.